Hey Data Junkies, welcome back. We are chugging right along, continuing on our path for the one-way ANOVA analysis of variance, and we are now into the fifth of the video series here, and this one is going to be focusing on post hoc testing. We just got done seeing on how we can conduct the one-way ANOVA in R, and we're going to do an extension of that into this new realm called post hoc testing. So let's go ahead and get started. Now with post hoc testing, this is where the real magic of the ANOVA starts to happen. Now when you're dealing with the one-way ANOVA, it gives you some things like sums of squares and mean sums of squares. It can tell you if you're statistically significant or not. It's an omnibus test, which means it's wrapping up a bunch of t-tests, I'm sorry, pairwise tests all together. And that omnibus test is what I call a low bar, because all you need is one pairwise test to become statistically significant, and the entire F ratio and F test becomes statistically significant as well. But it falls short. And this is where the magic is happening. This is where the black box is, the magician's trick, right? The ANOVA is going to tell you if you're statistically significant or not, but it's not telling you which pair or pairs, if there are multiple, were the ones that were statistically significant. How different were they from each other in order to figure this out and really track out some of this more fruitful information. And so this is where post hoc testing is going to start to come into play. Post hoc tests are what we call a diagnostic tool. It's a tool that we run aside from the test itself to help us get a better understanding about the test that we ran. Different diagnostic tools will have different purposes and different functions. Now this particular diagnostic tool, the post hoc test, is going to tell us which pairs were or were not statistically significant. And depending on your post hoc test, it may tell you more information as well. Now, because the post hoc is an actually, it's, it's a broad term, and so there are many different types of post hocs that we could be doing. They're called different families or methods of, of post hocs that we're going to apply. The main one we're going to focus on in this class is what we call Tukey HSD, where HSD stands for Honest Significant Difference. And we're going to use the Tukey HSD to help find patterns in the differences of means and tell a data story if there's one to tell. So let's go ahead and take a look at a particular post hoc. I'm going back to our example here of the Munchkins and the Wicked Witch. And uh, if you may recall from our previous lecture video, I did the ANOVA on it, and it was the complaints tilde on the region, and I saved it as an object called AOV Witches. I still have that AOV.Witches saved, and that object contains all of the information from the AOV function. Remember, you've got two of them, one way dot test and AOV. This is from the AOV function. And I can plug AOV into that, that saved object into the two key HSD. Or if I did not save it as an object, I can nest it inside a two key HSD as well, just like how I had nested it into a summary before. Keep in mind, you are not bringing the summary function along for the ride. It's just the AOV into the two key HSD. And when you run this, there are other options as well. Like if you want to change the confidence intervals, you can check out some of those options. The default is 95%. But what it's going to do is it's going to print out for you a series of columns. The leftmost column are going to tell you which pairs are being compared. So in this case, the first pair up is the north and the east regions of Oz. And then the second column is the difference in those means. So the average number of complaints from the north minus the average number of complaints from the east. Then what it gives us are two columns for a confidence interval on that difference of means, a lower and upper bound as well, and this is a 95% confidence interval in this case. And then the last column is P80J. P80J stands for an adjusted p-value. The adjusted p-value is where that mathematical magic is coming in, where I said before that, hey, ANOVA, one of its great benefits is controlling the alpha inflation. If you were just to do a bunch of pairwise tests like these, you could do, in this case, there were six pairwise tests. You could have done six different t-tests, but your alpha inflation would have been through the roof. So here, it's going to control for those, and it's going to modify the p-value for each of these pairwise tests to help compensate and keep your alpha in check so your alpha is actually at 0.05 in our particular case scenario right now. Now as we look through this, we can take these differences and we can look at these p-values and we can start to get an understanding of some of the stories that we might be able to see here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm shading out, uh, not completely, so you, you can still see it, but I'm shading out a little bit here the two center ones. These are not statistically significant. Now keep in mind, as you're looking for patterns in the data, things that are not statistically significant can be just as interesting to tell stories about as things that are. It just depends which ones are which, and where are they, and how many are there. 
So look for patterns. Humans are great at finding patterns in the most random weird things. We find, you know, a man on the moon and uh, Jesus on grilled cheese. You can find patterns in pairwise tests. Trust me. Just stare at them enough. They'll come to you. So, in this case here, the middle two were not statistically significant, so I'm just marking these that these were not significant. Note they were from the east and west and the north and south. This may be important to us later. Then I've drawn some boxes around here and said, okay, the ones above, these are negatives. Why were these negatives? Look to the side. Okay, north minus east and south minus east. So I've got some, the north and south had smaller means, the east and west had higher means. So if your difference in means are negative, this means that you had the second, the second group that's being compared had a higher mean than the first one. That's all that negative and positive in the difference of means is. If your means are positive, that means the first group in the subtraction had a higher value. So north and south have lower means than east and west. Okay, I could have figured that out from the main table just looking at them, but here I can see the differences in those means at least right away, so that's a nice easy comparison. And I can see that they're all statistically significant. So coming out then as I'm looking at this, I can start to see that there are more witch complaints when they are dealing with a north-south counterpart than when they are dealing with east-west. Conversely, the north and south aren't having any significance when they're complaining with each other. And this could go to sense that if you happen to know something about the Wizard of Oz, there were wicked witches that lived in the east and the west, and good witches that lived in the north and the south. And so what we can see here is if we had to make any recommendations to the Wizard of Oz, that he's probably going to need to spend his more time in the east and the west. This is where they had the higher prevalences, and they are, they are statistically different from the north and the south. So he doesn't need to spread his, his time around all over Oz. He can focus his time in those mean areas that had higher differences relative to the lower difference areas. And that's where we can take these postdoc tests. So that's how I looked at it from the table. Let me give you another quick way to look at this. We can visualize it. For those of you that don't look like looking at tables, you would rather have a graphic, I have something for you here. So in this case, if I take the AOV witches, plug that inside a 2 key HSD, take that 2 key HSD and plug that into a plot function, magic. And in this particular magic here, I have, and I put some extra options onto this particular plot, so it's going to look a little bit different from its base, but if you get my script file, you'll have all of the uh, features in there. And so what you have here is sort of a box and whisker type of spread where it draws a line down the center, and that center line says, if you cross my zero threshold, then your mean could technically be zero. I'm sorry, the difference in means could technically be zero. And if your differences in means could technically be zero, then there might not actually be a difference between you. This is the same sort of idea when we're talking about the t-tests and you're saying, you know, could your confidence intervals contain zero? If your confidence intervals could contain zero, you might not be different at all from whatever it is that you're being compared to. So in this case here, we see that the two groups in the middle, east to west and north to south, they crossed that dotted threshold line, and they, recall from the table, were not statistically significant. Where the others were, we can see that the top two pairs, those are bounding in the negatives. Those were the negative differences between the means. And these bars are confidence intervals, or 95% intervals. So we're hoping that the true population mean of the, the, uh, that represents the differences between these two sample groups uh, is somewhere within those particular confidence bars. And so that's just a great tool for you guys to help very put this out together. And that is the Crash Course Introduction Postdoc Test. And we're going to use this plenty of times as we go through, and it's a fantastic tool. But I'll be seeing you all in the next video. I'll see you then.